Good morning and welcome to worship this morning. I'm so glad we can all be here together today, wherever in the world, literally, you are worshiping from. So it's good to be the gathered body of Christ together today. I have a few announcements for us as we get going. First, at 10 o'clock is Sunday School for All Ages. One of the things that's nice about our e-news is it lists all of our activities for the week, and you can just click on the link and be taken to wherever uh, you need to go. So 10 o'clock, we will be having Sunday school for all ages. The adults are starting the new Lenten study for this year, which is the last words of Jesus from the cross. So we invite you to be a part of that. Also in our e-news, you'll find lots of youth activities uh, coming up. If you have any questions about those activities, please get in touch with Jeff, and he'd be happy to help you with those. This Wednesday, we also have Holden Evening Prayer, so a special thank you to Mel and Natalie Graff for being our musicians today and also sharing their musical gifts with us on Wednesday. And then our UFTA group invites you all to a couple of events that are happening in March. The first is our third and final book discussion on Love is the Way. And then also in March, we are going to be having local storytellers come in virtually via Zoom and share with us stories around St. Patrick's Day. So that should be fun and entertaining. And so all are welcome to be a part of that. And finally, our next senior drive-in service will be the first Sunday of March at 11 a.m. in our parking lot across from our Circle Drive. So we invite you to that service. With our announcements concluded, let us take a few minutes to prepare our hearts and our minds for worship as we listen to our prelude.
Our worship this morning begins in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We confess our sins before God and one another. God of mercy, Jesus was faithful even in the face of death, yet we so often fail you in day-to-day -day living. Our commitment is shaky, our promises are unreliable, and our actions are questionable. We quit when discipleship becomes difficult and complain that we don't get enough credit. Forgive us our neglect of your mission and our lukewarm devotion and wake us up to the urgency of your gospel. Friends, hear these words of forgiveness. God is gracious and pardons all of our shortcomings. May the giver of life forgive us our sins and restore us to the joy of discipleship and service. For the sake of Jesus, our faithful Lord. Amen. Our gathering hymn is for the fruit of all creation, hymn number 679. Thank you. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy One of mighty power, your word is powerfully dangerous. Your word casts out demons. Your word heals incurable diseases. Your word devours empires. Your word transforms the fabric of the universe. Help us to stand in awe and fear of what your word is capable of doing. Give us courage to speak your word and wisdom to hear it for the sake of the one whose very whisper can demolish sin, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our reading this morning continues us in the Gospel of Luke. Today we are in the 13th chapter. At that very time, there were some present who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will perish just as they did. Then Jesus told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to him, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me, Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way, because... It is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often I have desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you. And I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we gather together on this second Sunday in Lent, we continue in this gospel as Jesus takes his ministry closer and closer to the cross. We have witnessed Jesus throughout his ministry thus far healing, teaching, and preaching about the kingdom of God. Part of the teaching includes the very real reality that we focus on during this season of the church year, our sin and our need to repent. Jesus calls us to this life of honesty as a follower, where we have fallen short of God's will for our lives and the need to be reconciled. But somehow, it's easier to see somebody else's sin than our own. In a recent adult Sunday school class, we learned a new way to understand what sin is. Pastor Adam Hamilton, who put together this series on the Apostles' Creed, shares that the origin of the term sin in the Greek comes from the word that means an archer's arrow missing the mark. Sin, he describes, is our missing the mark in our words, in our actions, 
that cause separation between ourselves and God and ourselves and our neighbor. Oftentimes that sin is something we do and just can't seem to help ourselves, even though we know it's wrong. At other times, we choose to sin with ease. And yet many times we sin and we don't even know the hurt that we've caused someone. That's why in the creed, as well as the Lord's Prayer, forgiveness is mentioned. It is believed in by the early church and taught by Jesus that we need to forgive as well as ask for forgiveness. Relationships need to be restored. But to do that, we first have to admit that we are at fault. And that's not always easy to do. Instead, we try and wiggle out of our responsibility for sin. And we see in our lesson today, those surrounding Jesus were questioning him on specific incidents where calamity had occurred. In the first, Pilate had killed several Galileans, and in the second, a large tower fell and killed 18 innocent people, likely an accident. Either way, innocent lives were lost, which left people wondering if their sin had caused these things to happen. Asked another way, was this God causing bad things to happen because of someone's sin? To their dismay, Jesus responds that all sinners will die if they do not repent. Regardless of the size of the sin, sin needs to be acknowledged and brought before God. In God's eyes, it's not about who sinned less or more, but that we're all in need of a Savior. Which leads Jesus to tell this parable about a fig tree not bearing fruit and a farmer wanting to cut down that tree. The gardener asked for just one more year to try and get that tree to grow. A year's worth of nutrients from fertilized soil, special attention and care, and a watchful protector are what's needed. And if that doesn't work, then the gardener will cut the tree down. People are like fig trees. We need that kind of nurturing and care. We need to acknowledge when we're not bearing good fruit and surround ourselves with life-giving nutrients that will help us thrive. In our lives of busyness and worry, it's often hard to break away for even a moment of silence and peace. Time to be with God in prayer and take a deep cleansing breath of the Holy Spirit who fills us with new life. It's hard to do, but yet we so desperately need that time. We need that nourishment for our souls. And a reminder that Jesus gave his life for ours so that we can, with great courage and hope, confess those sins that weigh us down and trust that God's forgiveness is real and for us too. This season of Lent is a built-in time in the church year to do just that, to repent of everything that weighs us down, to confess so that we don't crumble under the weight of our burdens of guilt and shame, to take stock of our lives and turn around to God, putting God's kingdom as our first priority, and then trusting God to help us put everything else that's important in life in its proper place. You know, before this pandemic, the common response that people would say when you ask them, how are you doing, was, I'm busy. Well, safer at home and physical distancing at first brought with it more opportunities to be at home for some, but for others, it brought many more hours of essential work. Parents became teachers at home alongside teachers at school who were working from dawn until the wee hours of the morning, making in-person and virtual lesson plans. We have all gotten so creative in how we've connected, not just like this for worship, but Zooming and FaceTiming and texting and calling with friends and families and all of those activities that we belong to. And so now I find that when you ask people, how are you, instead of busy, what I'm hearing is exhausted, emotionally exhausted, physically exhausted, Zoom exhausted, alone exhausted, too much family togetherness exhausted, which for many, it can bring about its own sense of guilt, kind of like busyness did before. 
So where is God to be found in this busyness and exhaustion? Throughout our scripture, we find that Jesus walked with the disciples in all aspects of their lives. He ate with them. He met them when they were out at work, fishing, collecting taxes. He healed people when they were sick. He worshiped and he prayed with them. He fed people. Jesus took a nap on the boat with his disciples. He was baptized in the same water that John's disciples were baptized in. And he died on a cross with criminals on his right and on his left. Work, home, sleep, sickness, hunger, prison. Jesus was there. And Jesus is with you today in all of those places. He invites us to be nurtured and cared for by him. Like the fig tree, we need that attention and love to thrive. We, as people of God, need that. And repentance means that we intentionally turn to God. We turn to God in a way that spins our life around oftentimes. It's a way that we follow God. And the specifics of what that looks like is going to look unique, just like each and every one of us are unique. What's really special about this passage is when Jesus says, How often have I desired to gather your children as a hen gathers her brood under her wings? And you were not willing. I wonder if God's people then and today were not willing because they think God should be different. In Scripture, God's people were looking for a mighty warrior like King David to swoop in and free them from their oppressors. They were expecting swords and violence and bloodshed and, of course, victory. But instead, our Savior taught the inclusion of loving all people, even our enemies. And those enemies put him to death. Are we just like that today? Are we wanting to have Jesus come back like a member of the Justice League and wipe away this virus and this pandemic? And would we then believe and reorder our lives towards God's kingdom if we could just see Jesus save the day like that? Jesus tells us that his power is different. His power is like that of a mother hen who will protect every chick under her mighty wings from the fox that's prowling around the hen house. With every fiber of her being, she will keep a watchful eye to keep that fox at bay. Jesus could have described himself as a mama bear with huge claws and teeth, but instead he says that he's like that nurturing mother hen, scooting us along to safety, and keeping a watchful eye all the time. That's how God saves the day. More specifically, how God, through Jesus, saves us. Jesus takes all of those sins with him to the cross, a place human beings would see as weakness. It's a place where the mighty and powerful think that they have the upper hand. It's a place where those who have missed the mark in life who have sinned in a big way, end up. Yet Jesus chose to go there in our place. Jesus, in his innocence and in his deep desire like the gardener in the parable, loves us to new life. He sees where we have not borne fruit and never gives up on us. The story of Christ's victory over sin and death does not end on top of that hill of crosses. It ends in his resurrection on Easter morning and the new life poured out for each and every one of us. In the meantime, between life's real tribulations and trials and this resurrected life to come, Jesus calls our full selves, both saint and sinner, to come to him. He wants to sweep us up with all of the other baby chicks and keep us under his care. Part of that care includes us being able to go to him, and not just when we want something, but when we have missed the mark and need forgiveness. On Ash Wednesday, we repented at length the sins that separate us from God and one another, but we've slept since then. Each day is a fresh start to try again 
and also a fresh start to ask for God's help and guidance. Jesus died for you as an individual and you all as the world. So repent, dear friends, because blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Our worship continues with our hymn of the day. That is Chief of Sinners Though I Be, hymn number 609. We'll be singing verses 1, 3, and 5. confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we go before our Lord in prayer today, I invite you to use the comment section on Facebook or YouTube to put there uh, your prayer requests, things that are on your heart and mind today, so that the greater body of Christ could see those and pray with you uh, with what you would like to lift up to God. And so we pray together for the church, for the world, for all those who are in need. You give us endless chances to show your love in our lives, although we do not always take them. Open our hearts to see the world with the same compassion that you do and treat others with the grace you have given us. God of mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in the Holy Land and for reconciliation between its peoples. Soften hearts that have hardened and forgive those who have succumbed to hatred. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Even amidst the the curses of pollution, endangerment, and exploitation, this earth and its creatures continue to endure and thrive. Make us willing and dedicated partners 
committed to the renewal of our environment. God of mercy, hear our prayer. We struggle with the realities of this pandemic, including isolation, loneliness, sickness, and death. Strengthen all who suffer adversity of any kind and who need a special measure of your healing. For those who are grieving, give them comfort and the blessed memory of their saints who walked part of our earthly journey with us. Thank you for the promised resurrection to come. We lift up today those on our prayer list and those we name before you. God of mercy, hear our prayer. We are grateful for scientists and other frontline workers who use their gifts for the benefit of people in our planet. Inspire us to use the gifts you have given us wherever they are most needed and be bearers of hope in a weary world. God of mercy, hear our prayer. You hear all your children's prayers and gather the lost into your loving arms. Teach us to put our trust in you and in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time, when we would normally collect our offering, I'd like to offer words of, of thanks. Thank you so much for your generosity during this time of pandemic, as the ministry of Holman Lutheran Church has never stopped. We keep our doors open with our food pantry, with quilts going out the doors, with quilters working in their homes, with all of the other kind of ministries that happen through our doors. We couldn't do that without your support. So thank you for supporting the ministries here at Holman Lutheran Church. Let us now pray our offertory prayer together. You demand faithfulness and not perfection, O God. May these offerings be true reflections of our gratitude for your gifts, and may they be blessed to benefit those who need them by the power of your spirit. Amen. At this time, I invite you to grab some bread or crackers, wine, water, or grape juice as we, the gathered body of Christ together, share this holy meal together. We remember that on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and eat.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. A reminder of Sunday School for All Ages at 10 o'clock today and our senior drive-in worship next Sunday at 11 a.m. We hope to see you there. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.